This Gaia, Star Ocean, Code Vein, Intra Union, Rondo of Source. Hey, those last two are also obscure JRPGs. What the hell, man? So, you're back, huh? You're back for more. I knew it. I knew you will be back. Well, here I am once again with 10 more obscure JRPGs for hardcore players like you. Let's begin! Number 10, 7th Dragon 3, code VFD. This game belongs to a series of RPGs never released outside Japan, so that's the reason why people always wonder about its name. It is slightly connected to them story-wise, but more about the universe itself. This one has its own plot and character, so you don't really need to play the others to understand it. The game's a turn-based RPG which can be somewhat easy for the most part, as the battle mechanics are nothing convoluted. But the bosses, especially the dragons, will utterly destroy your hopes for a balanced adventure. Using the right parties and strategy will definitely help you against some of them, but all in all, it's still a damned grind fest. You probably noticed I said parties in plural, let me explain. The game lets you create an initial party of three customizable characters with different jobs. But then, as you make more progress, other parties will become available. So switching between them for these battles is a neat feature of it, which contributes to its challenge. Overall, 7th Dragon 3 may not be as brutally hard as other games in this video or the previous one, but it is still a good choice for hardcore players. Number 9. Grand Kingdom This PS4 and PS Vita RPG is often underestimated by many, since it's not story-driven but based on quests, building also armies and parties of 4 characters, it's hard to get into, but that's beside the point. Grand Kingdom is an invitation for yet another turn-based battle system, but with a lot of strategy involved. Moving your characters around the layers in order to attack their enemies is a key feature in this game. It also means the same for everybody else, which involves a lot of aspects such as guarding, healing and the use of traps. That's right, you can set up these to prevent the advance of your enemies or to damage them. In terms of story, it is quite interesting, revolving around an ongoing war, but it's definitely not the focus here. As I said at the beginning, it was underestimated because it feels balanced at first, but as you go on, unlocking more classes, creating more characters and fighting tougher soldiers, yep, it gets pretty brutal. So be careful who you run into these bored looking maps, because sometimes the key to success is to avoid them. The only way to truly enjoy this hidden gem is to master its battle mechanics, and that is the reason why I think it's perfect for hardcore players like you. Number 8. Is 6 The Ark of Napishtim Last time I recommended Is 3, now let me talk about Is 6. Also available on the PSP and PC, this is one tough bastard. The one I played is a PS2 version and I remember getting my ass kicked by most of the bosses. I swear some of them are so goddamn infuriating! This action RPG just has a way to get on your nerves, especially with its platforming elements. Jumping and dashing can be frustrating sometimes. You really need quick reflexes here as the action is fast paced, not technical, but the wrong move could become a serious mistake. Anyways, it's a fantastic game and I love it. Story is great being one of the first in the series to really go deep into it. The music, as usual, needs no introduction, as it always has been insanely amazing in these games. E6 stands out to me because of its gameplay mechanics, being a great evolution from its predecessors, now fully in 3D, and it's legendary for being an unforgiving son of a bitch. 
Fortunately, it is one of the best RPGs in this list, which should be enough for you to give it a try. Just remember, it's one of those where even on normal mode, you'll become very acquainted with hell. Number 7. Stella Deus, The Gate of Eternity Another hidden gem on the PS2 is Stella Deus, a grid-based strategy RPG with cell shaded graphics. Like most of its kind, this game is a frigging grindfest, as you'll run into a roadblock every two or three missions. Then it's on to the special dungeon where you'll be able to exploit the leveling system till your heart's content. However, a big part of its difficulty doesn't really lean on the experience, since it's balanced in that regard. Stella's problem is the horrible voice acting it has, as it can be excruciatingly painful! Nah, I'm just kidding. The acting is bad though, that is true, but the pain will come from the maps and the enemies. Some battles will just go on forever, mainly for their layout and not for their size. Enemies will often have a lot of HP, so fighting them will eventually tire you out. I don't mean this in a bad sense, of course, at least it wasn't that tedious for me. Maybe it's because I really like the characters and their story, or maybe because I'm such a sucker for tactical RPGs. Stella Deus is not a nightmare to play, but without experience in the genre, it will certainly kick your ass so hard, you'll kiss the moon. Number 6. Valhalla Knights 3 Alright, so the first game on the PSP is garbage. I never played the second one, so I was left with the third entry. Exclusive to the PS Vita, by the way. Honestly, I was expecting the worst, but it ended up being quite a solid experience. It's a much, much better game than the first entry in the series. Valhalla Knights 3 is an action RPG where you customize your character from different classes. You're then thrown into a prison city with a very interesting story, considering your character pretends to be a spy from the Empire. In reality, you're searching for the legendary treasure, but then you're caught up in all sorts of bizarre quests and twisted drama. This game is dark, and also with some heavy fan service involved. Wanna know what else is heavy? It's fucking difficulty! It just isn't your everyday hack and slash, nope. It's somewhat technical with strong variations depending on the weapons you use and also the armor you wear. Some enemies are just so hard to kill without the right equipment. Leveling up is slow, so grinding is a big part of it, especially considering its quest-driven nature. This game is good, but it's far from being a treat for beginners. If you're so damn hardcore, however, and if you have a PS Vita, I suggest you try this obscure gem. Number 5. Hero Saga – Levitain Tactics Here's a weird-ass game with a weird-ass subtitle, but with one very unique battle system. A strategy RPG, also grid-based, very reminiscent of Tactics Ogre and the like. It's hard because of obvious reasons, I mean most games of its kind are naturally hard, but also because of its rather obnoxious battle mechanics. You see, each of your characters is a leader of a small platoon, so when they go into battle with an enemy, you'll be taken to this screen. In here, you'll have to face them for three small turns, trying to take out the leader in a few hits or to deplete their group of soldiers. For every turn, there's a different action to choose from. Attack, charge, phalanx and defend. First one and last one are pretty self-explanatory. Charge means trying for the critical and phalanx is trading strength for accuracy. Thanks to this, battles can go on forever. Not only is it hard to get into, but also quite challenging as the enemy's AI is often smart. There's also a class system involved, talent system, job system, weapon system. You know what, I wouldn't call this game convoluted, but it's just a lot to deal with at first. If you get into it though, you'll probably have a blast and also a nightmare to never forget. Number 4. Dragon View 
also known as Sadly Draken 2. This is an action RPG in 2D that will undoubtedly try your patience. I said sadly because Draken is the absolute worst JRPG ever on the Super Nintendo. Dragon View suffered the consequences of that and unfortunately became an obscure gem on the system. First, you travel in these fake 3D areas in a first-person perspective. Once you go inside any of the dungeons, you turn into a side-scrolling adventure. There, you will battle enemies, some of them being so damn hard to hit. Playing an early hack and slash will get you through, but analyzing these foes and knowing the hows and the whens is the path to victory. Just imagine a 16-bit and 2D version of the Soulsborne series and you'll get the idea. It's not that technical when it comes to making strategies, but it can get a little bit over the top sometimes. Its difficulty lies within not knowing how to fight your enemies, so you better be prepared for a journey of masochism if you decide to rush against them. Overall, Dragon View is a simple, linear RPG with a generic story but a very solid gameplay. A good choice for a gamer in search of a challenge. Number 3. Lord of Arcana This is yet another game where you'll suffer through a boss rush. Fighting normal enemies on the several different areas will be no chore, you'll be fine, for the most part. I mean, these places are your grinding grounds and those creatures your grinding bodies. Some of them can be quite tough as you'll need to learn how to properly defeat them. Nonetheless, that's not where the difficulty stands in this action RPG. There is a huge, and I mean HUGE difficulty spike between the bosses and everybody else in this game. There's a bunch of them, and right from the second one, that will crush your spirit. Some battles can take forever due to the insane amount of HP they have. Others are because you gotta wait for the right moment to strike. And even others will depend on the weapons and the elemental attacks. Lord of Arcana is yet another quest-driven RPG. One not to trifle with, it is good and controls feel fine most of the time. So absolutely a must play for hardcore gamers trying to get into the obscure. Number 2. Saga Frontier 2 This is a turn-based RPG that's brutally hard, so get ready. It has two main characters to play as, meaning two routes to follow. Hardcore or not, I strongly suggest you start with Gustav, since it's more story-driven and easier to get into. Then you can do the other guy if you're still feeling so tough. Either way, the game is not linear, and it's very open to exploration. There's three things that make this obscure gem rather unnerving. First, the leveling up system is different than in most JRPGs. Here you gain status and not levels, and these are random, sometimes based on your actions during combat. Second, it has three different battle mechanics, slightly like Suikoden, with duels and strategic combat. The latter rarely happens, but when it does, you might feel confused, as if the game just threw you into them. Duels are just simple turn-based combat bought between one character and one enemy. The third reason why this game is so hard is the equipment system. Training your characters with a weapon so they can learn skills can be often a chore, especially since most weapons have a limited use. If you manage to get into the battle mechanics and its combos, you will have a surprisingly fun experience. Saga Frontier 2 is quite a solid game, but it's just too damn hard for the average player. Number 1. Growlancer 4. Wayfarer of Time Well, since Growlancer Generations made it all the way to the first place in the previous video, it was only natural that another one in the series will crown this list too. And oh dear, Wayfarer of Time is the toughest of them all. These are real-time strategy RPGs, meaning you select the actions of every one of your characters or you can just let them act on their own. That's obviously not a good idea, especially since almost every mission here has a different objective. Developers really went too far with this game. They took everything that was already hard in the previous games 
and made it 10 times harder. Being overwhelmed by powerful enemies, frustrated with some stupid ass mission objectives, restricted by timers, a mouthful of status effects, I don't even know where to properly start explaining how infuriating this asshole can be. It's as if every single action and choice you make heavily influences its outrageous toil. God, I love this freaking game. Anyway, I'm not sure Girl Answer 4 is the hardest game in this list, but it's pretty damn close to be it. In my opinion though, it is the best RPG here and the one that you, hardcore masochist, cannot miss. What? More? You're asking for more? You want a part 3? Jesus, are you out of your goddamn mind? Are you so damn hardcore and so damn masochist that you want 10 more JRPGs obscure for hardcore gamers? Well, I'll think about it. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and share this video with your friends if you want a part 3. Alright, see you next time!